All right. In this video, I want to talk about the history of the Christian church. And the reason why I want to do this is because uh, a Catholic fellow recently told me something Catholics have told me quite a bit, and that is to study history is to become Catholic. And of course, this is in context of study in Christian history, not just history in general, like studying the history of the Aztecs and the Americas, where Australia is going to make you Catholic. Obviously, it, the context is about the history of the Christian church. And I just usually give a simple reply, and that is to believe the Bible is to not be Catholic. Uh, to really make the stand that, hey, I'm relying on God, you're relying on man. And that's that, right? We're making our stands. And you you got to have a simple answer like that when people say things like that because you got to pick and choose your battles, right? You, you can't just open up and start talking about history and show, hey, well, I look at history and it doesn't make me want to be Catholic, right? Even the history being specific of the Christian church, it does not make me want to be Christian, right? But you can't waste your time getting into the details of, the, of a subject with somebody who really doesn't care, right? It's like uh, the old Asian proverb I've heard. I don't remember exactly how it goes, but it's something along the lines of if somebody's thirsty and they're asking for water, you just give them a half a glass, not a full glass. And why? Why just give them half? They're thirsty. Well, because if they're really thirsty, they'll ask for more, right? And then you just keep giving them a little bit for the half a glass. And if they keep drinking it and asking for more, then you give them more. But if they don't ask for more, then they weren't really as thirsty as they were really saying they were, right? Especially if they just drink a little bit, a little sip out of, off of it, and they're like, oh, I'm good. So it's basically the same thing you got to do when you're talking to people is you don't give them a whole lot of information, even if they want it. Because... They not might not be as hungry for the truth as they're claiming to be, right? You let them take the little bit you give, and if they want more, they'll start asking questions, start talking about it, and then you can get into it more and more, right? That's the way to go about it. So when you're you're having these conversations and somebody just makes a, a claim without really backing it up, you just make a reverse claim, and you don't back it up. And if they want to actually get into the conversation, they'll challenge you, right? If not, they just walk away, and that's that, right? Uh, but anyway, let's get into the history of the Christian church and I think this is just great how everything just kind of comes together because there was this uh, forum that I was, I'm part of that's predominantly Protestant, and they have this guy in there that keeps putting these little posts that are saying things like, oh, this was not part of the early church. This was not part of the original church, and he'll name some little things that the Catholics have today, or do today, believe today. And then when this Catholic fellow said that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a video about the history, right? I mean, I can name some big things right off the top of the, my head, right? And that is uh, the Crusades, right? Uh, I talked to Catholics who still s support the Crusades, and saying, well, if we didn't have the Crusades and didn't fight against the Muslims, then Islam would have took, taken over. Well, no, only if God allowed it. You see, the, the lack of faith there and thinking that you have to do it and that God's just going to let you be destroyed. Right? And that is completely anti-Christian. Going to war 
drawing the sword and shedding blood in the name of Jesus, in the name of Christianity? That's not the Christian way. Jesus said to love your enemies, bless those that curse you, turn the other cheek, and he lived it out. And he died for his enemies. He didn't fight against us. He allowed us to put him down. When he visited a Samaritan town and they were kicking him out, his disciples were like, hey, should we rain fire down on these people like Elijah? And he said, do you not know what spirit you're of? I came to save men's lives, not to destroy them. So crusades were not part of the early church. Matter of fact, a Roman pontiff had nothing to do with the church at all. Or a pope. Right? You want to say, oh yeah, God the Father. Yeah, well there you go. In early Christianity, the Holy Father is God. Not a title given to any man. That's not part of early Christianity. Definitely not a Roman pontiff. Roman pontiff during the time of Jesus and the apostles was a title given to the Roman emperor as being the high priest or the head of the Roman pagan church. So this was not a Christian title. And I don't know any Christian that would want to take on that title. And just to name a, a few things there, I think that one of the biggest things is, is Jesus and the apostles, uh, mainly focusing on the apostles here, never said you needed them to be able to read and to interpret the scriptures correctly. In Acts 17.11, Paul, an apostle who was given the spirit to such an extent he raised someone from the dead, calls the Berians noble for testing him to the scriptures by seeing if what he said was really there and it was really taught in, by God. Paul didn't say, hey, what are you doing? You need me to interpret it. I need to protect you from false interpretations. So saying that only the apostles and the successors, the quote-unquote church, because the church is every believer, and every believer is part of the priesthood. They were never the mediator between you and interpreting, 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 <laughs> interpreting the scriptures. Right? So, uh, just those are, are things that would make you question Catholicism, right? Not to mention the Catholic Church actually forbid people from having the scriptures in their own language and from reading them. That is a papal bull, and it's never been recanted. They don't enforce it. They're all kind of like some countries have laws, but they're not enforced. That's how it is with the, the Catholic Church as well. They have a, a canon law about the lay people, the common man, cannot have the scriptures. They can't read them on their own. That's not part of the early church. Paul says to study, to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. And he says that the scriptures are inspired by God, profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, Instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished on all good works. So it, that that was never part of the early church, right? I said, a lot of these things are the complete opposite, right? There was never any vow of celibacy among the apostles, the disciples, any bishop, any elder. Yeah, Paul said it's better if you were celibate, but there was no requirement to be celibate. He said, hey, if you want to marry, then marry. It's not a sin to do so. He's just saying, I think it's better if you didn't. 
You could have your life completely devoted to God. You don't have to vow celibacy. Jesus even says not to make any oaths. It's contradicting Jesus and Paul. It's twice. It's it's contradicting the scriptures. Right? But, uh, <clears throat> here's a one of the posts I wanted to read real here, right here. It says uh, the leaders. Of the Pope's cult are genius. It's only it's the only religion where its leaders can have a history of lying, cheating, stealing, murdering, pillaging, and plundering, writing forgeries, faking relics, selling sin, raping children, covering it up, and dogmatizing Gnostic heresies, and yet can still brainwash its minions into thinking they are infallible. And it's like, exactly. If any other group did that, you, they, they're demonic. Come out of them. I was talking to a fellow, a Christian, not a Christian fellow, a Catholic fellow about this. He was saying, well, we stay in the church to try to reform it and fix these problems. And it's like, oh, oh, well, how many of these... Uh, Issues have you and your like-minded Catholics actually reformed in the Catholic Church? What work have you actually really done in doing that? Because there has been none. And you being part of it and supporting it is just enabling these things. You just overlooking it and then justifying it by saying, well, the Protestant churches do the same thing. All right, well, don't be part of those churches that do that. Come out of them. Don't support them. And just because a Protestant church did the same thing does not justify the Catholic Church doing it. Doesn't make it okay. That's like your neighbor killed his wife. Right? And then you're like, oh, I'm going to kill my wife. And then the cops come and go, Whoa, you killed your wife, you're going to jail. And you'd be like, hey, hey, my neighbor killed his wife. They'd be like, okay, whatever, you're going to jail, <laughs> right? You can't say just because someone else is doing it that it's okay for you. It means you're both wrong. You're both going to pay for the consequences of it, right? Uh, the, the mindset they have is obviously stuck in a cult. Because if you had... Some guy, whether he, he's in a small group or he's starting to get a mega church going, and he's telling the people that you need me to interpret the scriptures, you're going to say, oh, that's a cult leader. That's right there, telltale sign right there. Boom, that's a cult leader. But then the head of the Catholic Church says that, and it's like, no, 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 he does have that authority. Even though Peter never said he was needed to interpret the scriptures, that he alone is infallible, never even claimed infallibility. All right? Infallibility, again, not part of the early church. All right? Just another thing there. I want to take a look through some of these things to see if there's other things brought up. Uh, hopefully I can pronounce this right. Confraternites of the cord were no part of the faith of the apostles. That's true. This one is burying an idol of Joseph, up, Joseph upside down on your yard to sell your house was not part of the faith of the apostles. Nope. That was not. Uh, or if your son becomes a priest, then... Uh, a Catholic priest, that is, then he's automatically going to go to heaven, and so is his mother. You get a free ticket. I know that's not necessarily something the Catholic Church teaches, but uh, there's still a lot of things that Catholics will hold to and believe. Anyway, they just kind of make things up, and it becomes a tradition, and then, and then all of a sudden it becomes a sacred tradition, and there you go, boom, now it's truth. 
making a distinction between venial and mortal sin was not part of the early church. Uh, the sin that is on to death is rejecting Jesus Christ. Making a distinction between dulia and elatria was not part of the faith of the apostles. Let's see. There was a bunch here, so let's see what we got here. Uh, referring to a man as the vicar of Christ, or Christ on earth, or anything involving Christ was not part of the faith of the apostles. Like, Jesus was not Christ on earth. I mean, not Jesus. I'm sorry, Jesus is Christ. I meant Peter. Peter was never considered Christ on earth. The vicar of Christ in place of Christ. That's not part of the early church. Uh, papal bulls were not part of the faith of the apostles. Speaking ex cathedra, not part of the faith of the apostles. Uh, praying to Mary, not part of the faith of the apostles. All right, some of these are kind of long, so I'm not going to. Dive into those. I think, you know, that pretty much set things done. Uh, I'd like to add that uh, burning Bibles is not part of the faith of the apostles. Uh, yeah, there's people who burned books in Acts. They weren't forced to do so. It wasn't done against their will. They burned their own books. And putting people in prison for not believing what you want them to believe, torturing them for not believing what you want them to believe, burning them alive for not believing what you want them to believe, was not part of the faith of the apostles. That's exactly what the Catholic Church did throughout the Dark Ages, through the Inquisitions. Uh, the Church joining with the government with the state, such as the Roman Empire, not part of the faith of the apostles. Matter of fact, Jesus says that Satan is the prince of this world. Paul says that Satan is the god of this world. And Satan offered the kingdoms of this world to Jesus, and he rejected it. It seems as though the Christian church accepted that and when they became Catholic and joined with the Roman Empire. They accepted Satan's offer there of the kingdoms of this world, unlike Jesus. And they formed Catholicism, and it's just an abomination. They committed adultery on God. They've become a harlot. When the church mixed with the state, that's adultery and fornication. Like all these denominations that are 501c3 organizations, they're doing the same thing. I'm... So yeah, history, uh, just looking at the history of things, doesn't make you think Catholicism is the original church. It doesn't make you think that they're even Christian. It doesn't make you throw out the Bible and convert to Catholicism. It makes you, if anything, if you're not going to use the Bible, you're just going to use history. It would probably make you atheistic. Not that you don't believe in God, but you would rather act as though he didn't exist if he's the God of the Catholics. I mean, look what he's done through Catholicism. Don't want any part of that. Kind of like the God of the, the Calvinists. Wouldn't want a part of that either. Right? Thank God we can go to the Bible ourselves. We can get to go and get to know God on our own because he's no respecter of persons. Anybody who will come to him, he'll reveal himself to. If you come to him in a pure heart, you also be persistent.
just keep coming at them. Uh, so anyway, I'll wrap this up here with the three verses I like to put into all my videos. Isaiah 34, 16, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. So that Jesus doesn't tell you what he tells the Sadducees here in Matthew 22 at verse 29. Ye do err not knowing the scriptures. You don't err not knowing the church. You don't err not knowing the clergy. You don't err not knowing the traditions. You err by not knowing the scriptures. When you know the scriptures, you know God. As Jesus said, you search the scriptures because in them you think you have eternal life. And they are, which test and they are that which testify of me. But you won't come on to me that you may have life. So he's telling you to search the scriptures. Because that's where eternal life is. Because that's where you know God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You're born again by the incorruptible seed, by the word of God, which is the gospel, which is preached on to you. How Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day. And as Jesus tells us here in John 17, 3, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the one the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou ha hast sent. And this is a deep, intimate knowing. As Adam knew Eve and she conceived, well, you need to know God on that deep, intimate level where you end up bringing forth the new you as you're reborn. So, with that being said, thanks for watching. Take care. All right, uh, there's something I wanted to add into this, and that is that uh, when I was talking to that fella about staying in the Catholic Church even though it's doing all these evil things, you and you're supporting it, then you're enabling all the evil things that it's doing. Even if you say you're staying to try to reform it, that's like saying, oh, I'm staying in Hollywood to try to reform it. Yeah, okay. That's BS. And when I asked him, what have you and your like-minded Catholics done to reform the Catholic Church? He couldn't present anything. It's like, oh. So why are you supporting this and enabling it? You haven't made any changes for the better. Yet you're still supporting it. That makes no sense. And then he was saying how he's being like Jesus, right? Or he's calling the sinners to repentance. Mm hmm Okay. Well, you you got a couple issues with that. When Jesus called them to repent and they didn't, he didn't just stick with them and hang with them. Right? Not only that, Israel was the established church. He didn't stay in it and have his apostles stay in it to try to reform it and take over the leadership. No, he called them out of it and started a new church. Right? So if you want to bring up Jesus to support your idea of staying in a corrupted system so that you could reform it it's a bad example to use it really is so just come out of that mess and don't support it well, they got your brainwashed into thinking that if you don't support them and you leave them that you have no salvation and you you're gonna go to hell because you didn't go to one of their church buildings this week and you didn't listen to their their story and he didn't partake of uh, the wine and the bread that they have so oh you're going to hell and you better support them even though they a lot of the priests have molested children and they don't give them over to the authorities they protect them they'll call all kinds of lies and forgeries like I was mentioning um, even even the Catholics are telling me that Francis is an anti-pope, an anti-Christ, not the anti-Christ, but an anti-Christ. Telling me all these things that are wrong with Vatican I and Vatican II. All right, then why you keep supporting it?
you're just enabling it. You want it to change. You need to stop supporting it. An example is uh, what happened recently with Budweiser. Remember they put the transgender fella on the beer can and people stopped drinking it? And what did Budweiser do? They took him off because people boycotted. You put them out of business, they're going to change. Well, you want the Catholic Church to reform and change? You need to boycott and stop supporting it. You trying to reform it from the inside? Well, as long as they're not getting punished for the wrongs they're doing and they're keep making a, a profit, why would they change? Same thing with Budweiser. If people kept buying it, they wouldn't change it. So thanks again for watching. So that fella couldn't join the church. He couldn't join the church. He couldn't get baptized. He couldn't get baptized. He woke up with God. He woke up with the devil. Are you saved? Amen. So that fella didn't take the sacraments. Didn't take the sacraments. Didn't say the rosary. Didn't take the rosary. Didn't tithe. Didn't tithe. He went to heaven. He went to hell. You saved? Didn't keep the law. He didn't keep the law. He broke the commandments. He broke the commandments. He didn't keep the golden rule. He didn't keep the golden rule. He woke up in glory. He woke up in the pit. Are you saved? You're saved. If you're not saved, you're over here or you're over here. You sure ain't in the middle. He said, Lord, remember me, thou comest thy kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and said, Verily I say unto thee, today shalt thou be saved. Just like that. You have been saved? If you ever saved, you were saved like that.